My 14 year old son, Alexander, took a pill he ordered through social media and it killed him. Alexander, just one of the young people whose lives have been stolen by a new scourge. Drugs with fentanyl disguised as other meds causing accidental overdoses. Shocked parents caught unaware, now left to grieve over a child's fatal mistake. And where do those fatal doses come from? Maybe the most shocking part of all. Social media apps promote the drugs right out in public. Some dealers even deliver. It's so easy. It's easier than getting the alcohol. And those parents and other loved ones left behind, racked with frustration as well as grief, are looking for a way to stem the tide of death. Some have started supportive organizations to help heal, others pushing to toughen the laws, hoping somehow to see an end to this plague. We have their stories. Fox 11 News In Depth starts right now. Hello, everyone. I'm Hal Eisner. We have a number of guests today, but one subject, drugs and social media. Let me share with you some shocking statistics. Back in 2013, only 3% of overdose deaths involved fentanyl, a synthetic opioid that's used to treat very severe pain and said to be 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. By 2019, that figure was up by nearly 33%. And in the first seven months of last year, fentanyl was responsible for about half of all of the overdose deaths. Joining us right now, DEA agent Bill Bodner and Sam Chapman. Thanks to both of you for joining us. We appreciate it. Good morning. And I want to, yeah, thank you. And, and, and I want to pick up here with something that I think is very touching because Sam, we really appreciate your being here. Uh, Sam's son died just a couple of weeks ago. And, and we talked to him right after, the day after he and his wife, Laura Berman. And let's listen to a little bit of that story. I want justice to be done, and I want this person to be found. Sex and relationship therapist Dr. Laura Berman can't believe her 16-year-old son Sam is dead. What we could pit, piece together uh, from his friends and from the police and from the evidence it, so far is that he um, was experimenting with some court sort of substance, we think it was Xanax, that was, they believe, laced with fentanyl because... Um, when I found him, he was gone. Berman believes her son was the victim of a dealer on Snapchat who sold him a counterfeit prescription drug she describes as maybe Xanax laced with fentanyl. Santa Monica police are early in their investigation. Laura's husband, Sam Chapman, was last to talk to the teen after he screamed down from upstairs. Make me a cheeseburger, which I did. And then uh, I went upstairs and brought it to him, told him I loved him. He was playing his computer game. He told me he loved me too. And I went back downstairs, not knowing it would be the worst day in my life. We seized over a million of these pills in the past 12 months. DEA special agent in charge, Bill Bodner says, these are some of those seized counterfeit pills. He says what may have happened to Sam Berman is allegedly happening to many other kids nationwide. Counterfeit pills pushed on social media made to look like real Xanax or something else, but usually fentanyl and can be deadly. It's something made in a filthy clandestine lab in Mexico. There's no quality control. The dosing is extremely inconsistent. It only takes two milligrams, two and a half milligrams of fentanyl to kill you. Think about that. That, that That's an incredible thought right there. And Sam, I, I know that Laura would want to be with us right now, but but tell us where she is and tell us what she's doing. So she's off in the redwood forest, hugging the mother tree and dealing with her, her grief right now. It's a way to kind of escape for the moment and, and try to come to terms with what's going on. And Bill, what's going on is, is really a crisis, isn't it? It certainly is. It's, you know, it, it, the opiate crisis in this country isn't new, but it's taken a different form now. And one thing that's having a dramatic and uh, disproportionate impact on our youth is the deception involved. Just in the case of, uh, of Mr. Chapman, we, we heard that potentially there was a counterfeit Xanax pill involved, and that's what's happening. It's the counterfeit nature of these pills. The young kids don't know what they're taking. They think it's a legitimate prescription drug, and it's not. It's fentanyl. It doesn't have the prescription drug ingredient in it at all, and it's incredibly dangerous. And you've told me, you've said that this stuff is being made in clandestine labs in, in Mexico, and you, you've, you've established that. 
Absolutely. Uh, the Mexican drug cartels, Car Cartel de Jalisco, Nueva Generación, is the primary one. They're manufacturing this drug in Mexico. They saw what was happening with the epidemic crisis in this country. Uh, in 2012, there were 255 million opiate prescriptions written in this country. That number in last year was down to, let's say, around 150 million. That was progress. But unfortunately, these drug cartels in Mexico saw this and saw that the reins were being tightened on the legitimate pharmaceutical drugs. And they said, here's an opportunity to capitalize. Here's an opportunity to profit. We don't care about the kids taking these pills. Let's flood the United States with them. And that's what's happened. Uh, they've started making these counterfeit prescription drugs and flooding them across the border because it's a huge profit maker for them. Sam, this past week, the DEA put out a sort of an informational campaign to try to create awareness. But I know that's what you're trying to do, too. What are you and Laura doing to try to, to take something tragic and turn it into something as positive as you possibly can? We're trying to get the word out about the dangers of Snapchat and other social media, about the fact that they don't help the police with these investigations or opening our children's phones when somebody dies, and about the dangers of fentanyl. And so we've uh, put a support group together on Facebook called Parents for Safer Children, and uh, my wife has joined the board of the Organization for Social Media Safety to try and move some legislation and education. When we talked to Snapchat, and I did, they took the position that we are not, uh, we have no tolerance for this sort of thing, and we are trying to stop it. Uh, Bill Bodner, DEA has certainly tried to work with these uh, social media campaigns and companies. What, what, what have you found? Are they cooperating with you? And we only have about a minute left. They, they are cooperating with us to some extent. Of course, they can do more and they need to do more. Uh, they need to be, more, to be more socially aware and see what's happening in the community and invest in, in stopping this problem. Uh, they and, and just very say, quickly, and just very quickly, because we're, we're out of time, just tell everybody what you're doing with this campaign uh, in, in a short version here. Operation Engage, we're, we're trying to educate the public about the deceptive nature of these pills. We're trying to stop children from taking them and dying from them. Uh, we're specifically targeting dealers who sell drugs to people that cause an overdose death. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to do more because the public expects more from us. Bill Bodner with DEA, Sam Chapman. Again, our condolences to you and your family. Thanks for joining us. This subject will continue after the break as we take a look at the role of social media in this fatal fentanyl epidemic. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Fox 11 News in Death. I'm Hal Eisner. California State Senator Melissa Melendez introduced Senate Bill 350, 350, a couple of weeks ago to combat deaths and honor a constituent's daughter, Alexandra Capaluto, uh, a 20-year-old college student who died of drug poisoning while visiting home for the holidays. State Senator Melendez joins us now, along with Alexandra's father, Matt Capaluto. And that's, that's a very difficult situation both of you find yourself in because, Matt, you've had a loss, and, and Senator, you're trying to fix the problem. So let's start with Matt. And Matt, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your daughter and what happened to Alexandra? Sure, I'll try to be brief. Um, my daughter, uh, as you mentioned, was a college student, Arizona State University. She was on home for Christmas break. Um, my daughter did suffer from depression, uh, insomnia and anxiety. Um, uh, unfortunately, she made a decision to uh, self-medicate. She turned to uh, social media in search of oxycodone. Um, she found a person who was willing to sell her oxycodone. Um, she ended up receiving a counterfeit oxycodone pill. Uh, it was a, a counterfeit pill made to look like oxycodone, but in reality, it was a lethal dose of fentanyl. She took this pill in her bedroom by herself before going to sleep late at night. And uh, uh, unfortunately, my wife found her dead the next morning in her bed. Another tragic story. A couple of weeks ago, we delved into the social media connection that makes this crime so insidious. I spoke to relatives of kids who had died of accidental overdoses and also people whose lives had nearly been ruined. 
Yeah. You've gotten them and, from social media? Uh, yes, in the past. Taylor Reichel got so hooked on drugs he bought on social media, he became homeless. You went on Instagram. You Correct. found, what, advertisements? How did you find out uh, that you were selling drugs? So through hashtags? He'd pick them up on the street from an online dealer. My 14-year-old son, Alexander, uh, took a pill he ordered through social media, and um, it killed him. Well, where did your son get his? Um, Alexander got his through Snapchat. Her son already knew someone who was a dealer online, and that's what got him in trouble. Jody Barber's son died in 2010. He got hooked on pharmaceutical drugs at first because of doctor's prescriptions, which sent her into schools to try to help others. What have you learned about the ease from which children, young people, teens, young adults are able to get drugs on social media platforms? It's so easy. It's easier than getting alcohol. They can get it and have it delivered to their door within 10 minutes. It's so, so scary out there. Easier than getting alcohol. That, that's quite the thought. So first of all, let's talk to the senator about that bill, Senate Bill 350, a state bill. Uh, Alexandra's Law, what would that do? How did that come about? Uh, how would that make a difference? So Alexandra's Law SB 350 is designed to give prosecutors another tool. And what it does is it, when someone gets, uh, you know, arrested for dealing, trafficking, selling fentanyl, and they are before the court, they are advised that this type of behavior could result in the death of another human being, just like they do when someone's in front of the court for a DUI. They are told this type of behavior can cause the death of another human being. So now they've been warned, now they've been advised to alter their behavior, you know, hopefully stop selling drugs and fentanyl. And then if, if they are brought before court again for doing this thing, that gives prosecutors the ability to choose the option of charging them with murder should the should their drug dealing result in the death of another person. And and Matt, what is your involvement in this? Uh, at, at this point, myself, along with uh, several other parents um, who have lost a child, uh, we're advocating to get this law passed. Uh, we need it. Fortunately, we have Senator Melendez who who has brought this forward. Um, at this point, we're doing everything we can to reach out to our state assembly members, our state uh, legislators and senators to get them uh, uh, on board with this bill. Uh, we, need, we need this. Lives are being lost because we do not have something like this in place right now. These sort of legislative matters are very challenging. They start off in the rules committee, then they go to that committee, then they go to this committee. Eventually it gets to the legislature. Senator, what kind of process are we talking about here? How long could this be protracted? It is a long process. You know, we just introduced the bill a few days ago. So now we have to get the bill assigned, it goes to the committees in the Senate, then it has to go to the assembly. So it's not a short process. We're talking about, you know, possibly three, four months, but it's, it's a worthwhile effort, obviously, if it's going to save someone's child. I mean, I have kids of my own. I've got five kids of my own. And I, you know, it's terrifying as a parent, knowing when you send your kids out there, you you, you do the best you can. You, you warn them of the dangers out there, but you, know, you can't wrap them in bubble wrap and, and protect them the entire time. And I don't want to see any other parents like Matt have to talk about their daughter's death from, from one pill. But, you know, I have to ask you, and I want to ask both of you, in the last segment, we heard the DEA agent Bill Bodner say this stuff is made in Mexico. It's in clandestine labs. And, and, and so it gets trafficked over here. So do you think this will make an impact? Because you're talking about people outside the country. Very short answers. We have less than a minute. Matt, first you and then the senator. Well, it's an advisory notice putting drug dealers on notice. If you are going to uh, uh, sell these illicit drugs that can lead to somebody's death, we're going to go after you. So hopefully that advisory notice uh, is a wake up call for them to get into another business. Uh, and Senator, if they don't, your thought, your thoughts, Senator. I just, I think we all have an obligation to do what we can to combat this epidemic. Um, it comes in many different forms, but we, I think as humans, we have an obligation to do this. I want to remind us that we're talking about one subject today, but we have multiple guests. And so I want to thank both of you for being with us. Uh, Senator Melissa Melendez, who is a Republican representing a pretty good chunk there of Riverside County. And Matt, you know, 
good luck on this venture. You and I have talked before. I know it's a big challenge. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you, Hal. Thank you, Hal. Coming up next on Fox 11 News In Depth, what some people are doing to find a purpose in all of this trauma. That's next. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Fox 11 News In Depth. Our next two guests are doing their best to make something positive out of these unimaginable tragedies. They're struggling to provide assistance with the crisis brought on by opioids, fentanyl, and social media intersecting. David Kessler is an author and a world-renowned expert on grief who founded the website grief.com. And Mark Berkman is the executive director of the Organization for Social Media Safety. David, first, let's start with you. What happened in your situation to get you to where you are today? Sure. Well, after being a grief specialist for decades, I had to deal with the accidental death of my own son, David, at 21 years old. He had an argument with a girlfriend and uh, went out and decided to use the way that you and I might have with alcohol or beer. And uh, it turned out that the uh, drugs he used had other drugs in them that he was unaware of and he died. So and and Mark and Mark, what? How did you get to this place in your life? Sure. So our founder Ed Peisner, his son Jordan, was brutally attacked when he was fourteen, while uh, an associate attacker filmed the attack and then uploaded it to social media, where it went viral. I at the time was uh, working in the California State Assembly, and we ended up writing legislation on that issue that came to be known as Jordan's Law. And then we decided to found the Organization for Social Media Safety to fight against all social media related dangers. And, and I know that's exactly what the guest in the last segment would like to do with their bill, which is Alexandra's Law. Uh, David, tell me, uh, are the people that you advise, are they mostly people that are in this situation with social media and drugs? We are seeing such an epidemic of that these days. So many people you know, their children are just experimenting with drugs and they don't realize how deadly they are. We don't realize that a relapse can put you in a graveyard these days so much quicker than it ever could before. Mark, I have to ask you, you know, you, you deal with policy, public policy. What can parents do? Parents can do, do a few things. First of all, having that conversation with your child about all the dangers on social media, including substance abuse. Don't underestimate how important that is because kids that don't know that there's a danger lurking, they won't be able to avoid it. And two, if your child has exhibited any risk factors like previous substance abuse, behavior problems, mental health issues, you want to really examine whether you're going to have your child on these higher risk social media platforms like Snapchat, and you're going to want to think about monitoring software. We tend to endorse a, a software called Bark that will give, give parents uh, alerts if something suspicious or dangerous might be happening on your child's device or certain social media platforms. David, let me, let me ask you uh, along the same lines, actually. Uh, grief is something that stays with you for a very long time. It's, it's the body's way of dealing with tragedy. And, and, and so what do you advise parents who have been through situations like this or may, God forbid, end up in a situation like this? Well, we always think when it's someone's in grief, they're in pain. Let's not talk about it. Let's pretend it's not there. And people in grief want to talk about it. And in this case, we need to have these conversations. So I suggest to people, be open. If it makes other parents, other people uncomfortable, your grief or what's going on now with drug use, doesn't matter. We have to talk about it to prevent deaths. And as we talk about it, we've spent this half hour talking to a half a dozen people who have been touched by this crisis. And, and so, Let's try to find resolve here. Where, where do we go from here? How do we fix this problem? How, does a Senate bill do it? Or is that just one more kind of leg trip along the way? David. I think it's everything. I think we have to make sure there's laws that hold social media companies accountable. 
I think we have to have laws to make sure that uh, the casual drug use that's taking lives now is people are held accountable for getting them the drugs. I think parents have to do extra talking and be extra vigilant. And so many people I know whose children died said, I didn't want to invade their privacy. Your children's lives are at stake, invade their privacy. Mark, your, your organization deals with social media safety. Have you had success with any of the social media platforms trying to make some progress in dealing with this problem? This particular problem, a little bit insufficient. If a platform like Snapchat is going to have children on their site and going to be making money off of, their, off of those children, then they better do a heck of a better job making sure that people are not on that platform acting with impunity, selling uh, narcotics and other drugs. And if Snapchat and other platforms aren't going to do that of their own accord, we're going to make sure that they do it. And, you know, final thought here, David, we know that the, the, the social media platforms are not going away and the kids are not going to stop looking at them. And, and oftentimes what, how they get this stuff is some ad that somebody has put on social media in order to try to sell some drugs that are dangerous. So 30 seconds, real quick, bottom line. I think we got to make sure these social media companies know this is unacceptable, dangerous, and we are not going to allow it. And we have to really parent our kids in a way we never have before. David Kessler, Mark Berkman, thank you both very much. And Fox 11 News in depth will continue right after the break. And finally, if you haven't already, please check out my podcast. It's called What the How? You can get it wherever you subscribe to podcasts or just go to whatthehowpodcast.com. A personal thought as we wrap up this program, this kind of a show is very difficult to do. Talking to people who have been through so much trauma and so much tragedy. I wanna thank our guests. They, they really put it on the line today to talk about something that's very close to their hearts, something that's very difficult and what clearly has become a bit of a crisis in this country that many people are trying to address. That's it for this week's Fox 11 News In-Depth. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week, everybody. See you next time.